Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Let's Play Trespasser. Looks like 20. As Anne throws and catches her gun in the air like that. In how many games can you do that, eh? How many games allow you to toss your gun up in the air and then catch it again? Not very many. And probably with good reason, admittedly. Anyway, previously... We were making our way up the Atherton Causeway towards the town of Burroughs as Anne continues to search for a way to get off Site B, an island full of dinosaurs, many of which have already tried to kill her. Luckily for her, she seems to be able to single-handedly, literally, fight off all of these dinosaurs with just an assortment of random weapons, which you've already noticed, and I'll make it extra clear in case you weren't sure, cannot be reloaded. You can never find additional ammunition for these. You just get to work with whatever was in the gun when you Looks found like it. 20. Now, I wish I could remember the name of this dinosaur up ahead, but I'm afraid I don't. The main thing is that he's a... he's a veggie. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a herbivore, which means he'll be leaving us alone. I could shoot and kill him if I wanted to, if I used probably all, my, all of my ammunition to do it and got lots of headshots. But I don't see why. That would be a bit mean after all. He's quite big though. Now there's not much in this area down here. There's a little sort of dried up riverbed type thing which leads off in that direction, but to my knowledge, to my memory, there's really nothing down there. It's a very large area with not a lot in it except for this guy. However, there is a little Easter egg, if you like, down here at the bottom near this beach. Interestingly, he seems to be joining us down on the beach. Normally, he doesn't do this. This is the first time I've ever seen this happen. I suppose this is one of the things I do like about this game, the inherent weird randomness of it. No two playthroughs are ever quite exactly the same, mostly because the dinosaurs are a bit random and strange themselves. He seems quite fascinated with us though, doesn't he? That's all there is here. Just that little sound clip effectively in these large dinosaur bones and the deck chairs. You'll remember that audio clip as being from the opening scene of the second Jurassic Park film. Now, interestingly, I don't know why it plays here, really, because this is not the same beach as is depicted in the film at all. But they felt the need to put it in here anyway, I suppose, just as a cheeky reference, I guess. Interestingly, that scene from the beginning of the second movie is actually the beginning opening scene from the original book Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. I don't know why they felt the need to put that in the second movie and not the first, but it's one of many differences between the book and the films, of course. Alright, we're back up near the Triceratops. I thought I'd cut out that bit, little part of the journey there since it was a little bit boring. Anyway, we're going to head up this way and onwards towards progress, towards the end of the level, hopefully. We now have two really excellent weapons, though, as a result of that detour down there. We've got this M14, and we've also got the hunting rifle. Two really good rifles in this game. We can get a lot of work done with these. We can probably kill a lot of dinos. A phone. Oh, thank God. Contact your supervisor. 
Profesor. Well, it was worth a try. Uh, now, unfortunately, Anne's hand seems to have gotten stuck in pointing mode. I wonder if we can... There we go. About 20. Right. Another box puzzle here. Just want to have a little look around to see if there's any... Anything useful, like a gun lying around. Doesn't seem to be the case, though. All right. Whoa, careful. Nearly got myself killed there. We're fine. Like 20. Everything's fine. How are you? Trying to jump up into the middle bit here. There we go. And there's a velociraptor. It's nine. I wonder if we can snipe him from here. And get the sights lined up just right. Oh, or just knock ourselves off with this crate. Uh, uh not good. Not good. Move. Hold still, you little git. Come on. I was hoping to one-shot him there, but never mind. Seven. There we go. Now we need to get down from here, because it doesn't go any further from that for the minute. There we are. And very generously, the game is going to give us yet another gun here. I'm not going to take you for now, though. The game is very generous with the guns at this point. It will be much less so later on. Now, there's no point in trying to sneak here. The game has no concept of stealth whatsoever. Six. Five. Two. One. My marksmanship could use some work. Never mind, maybe I will go back and get that revolver. Six left. There we go. It's not a bad gun, this one, either, actually. This is one of the better pistols in the game. Handguns, technically, I think, is the term. Not pistol in this case. People will be on me in the comments about that, I'm sure. Again, the road goes up here at such an angle that it's impossible to climb up there. And does not deal very well with steep slopes. It has to be said. And if you're thinking, is that another box puzzle in the distance there? Why, friend, you'd be absolutely right. But look, there's something on top of those boxes. Oh, trespasser, you absolute tease. Checkmate. Feels full. This is the MP5. Now, you know I mentioned a minute ago that this game has no concept of stealth. This is the silenced version of the MP5. Again... The game was probably supposed to have a stealth element at some point. But it didn't make it into the original game. Oh yeah, and if you were wondering... Yeah, you can fire guns gangster style. Uh, 
Anyway. Yeah. Whatever. I've got an M14 with 20 bullets in it. We're fine. I am going to need... Six rounds. Oh, that's nice. All right, let's chuck this up here. Get that later. I am going to need a box. Possibly more than one box. Where is that other... Oh, I chucked it over here, didn't I? Almost out. Okay. Really empty. That did the trick. I do wonder what Anne's day job is. S such is the case that she's able to survive on a dinosaur island with a broken arm and instinctively knows upon picking up an MP5 how full the magazine is. It really makes you wonder. I begin to suspect we're going to need more than one box, but I'm determined to try it without doing that. Come on, Ant. You can do it. Sometimes the nature of the jumping and her general locomotion is that you can actually jump your way up things that normally shouldn't really be possible, but sometimes you can just sort of get away with it. Like, I think I'm possibly about to here. Hold on. Come on. If we're stubborn enough, we might just manage it. Never mind. <laughs> Come on, we can do this. What doesn't help is the fact that the box moves around as we stand on it. There we go. Only two left. Oh, it's this one. <laughs> Yeehaw. Right. <laughs> Let's... No, come on, please don't fall back down again. No, please, not again. You'll notice there's a very pixelated shadow of our M14 floating around on the ground there, by the way. Our gun has a shadow, but we don't. Six rounds. Right. Now that obstacle has been negotiated. Let us continue. Oh yeah, and this crate's floating off the ground, by the way. You'll see a lot of items in the game randomly floating above the ground. Feels full. This is another gun that I don't know the name of, but it's a machine pistol, effectively. It's about half. It's rubbish. I don't want it. Six left. Line that up again and carry on. Again, you'll know how big and expansive this level actually is in terms of its general makeup. By the standards of, the, of its day, this is pretty huge. I'm trying to think of a game from this general sort of era that was this big. The only one I'm really thinking of is Halo. A sort of scientific myth. An evolutionary scenario in which an ecosystem is isolated and preserved. The rest of the world changes, leaving a tiny, fragile pocket where ancient species survive. Yada, yada, yada. You may have noticed that pixelated sprite of a velociraptor there who has now popped into being as a 3D creation. Although his AI hasn't actually quite kicked in yet. If I get a bit closer, though, it will. Of course, you'll note that the Brachiosaurus is active from a much longer distance. There we go. Now, unfortunately... I don't believe we can distract the Velociraptor using the Brachiosaurus. The, the raptors completely ignore the big Brachiosaurus. But that's fine. There's quite a bit of area here we can just generally sort of wander around. Though there's not an awful lot to find out here. Except for more of these guys, of course. Yeah, I see you in there. Come on. Let's have you. Looks like 20. 
Now the Brachiosaurus is making it very, very difficult to aim my weapon. Let's retreat a little bit first, shall we? No, go away. Go on, shoo. Makes the ground shake from quite a long distance, too. It's also very noisy, this one. And one more. Seventeen. Uh, damn it. Come on. We can do better. There we go. There's another fellow over here. I don't know if crouching really makes a difference to overall stability. Seems to a bit when the ground's being shaken by this guy, so let's crouch. Please, will you go away? Whoa, hello. Thirteen. We got him. Wasted a bullet there, never mind. Ooh, I had another one. They sometimes really sneak up on you, these guys. Partially because of my own lack of perception. And also because sometimes the game is very fiendish and likes to spawn them in when you're not looking. Very close to you. There we go. Told you we'd kill a lot of raptors with this gun. Anyway, we should head back over to the left side now. Now, we could have avoided them all completely just by going straight up there. But that would have been a bit boring, if you ask me. I tend to play Anne as a little bit of a Rambo dinosaur hunter whenever I play this. Mostly because I've played the game enough to actually get va vaguely competent at shooting the dinos. When I first played this game, that first raptor we beat on the beach level killed me a good three or four times before I managed to defeat him. That's just how awkward the controls are in this game. I'm probably making it look easier than it actually is. Ten. Nine. Eight. Six. He says as he misses all of his shots. Four. Three. One. Is it empty now, or do we have one more shot in this? Empty. It's empty. Five rounds left. In the left. winter, we began building the supports for the elevated transit system that would unify the island. Concrete towers rose through the jungle canopy. This is a Barrett 50 cal. Round 10. It's bloody useless, as you can see. Oh dear. Five rounds Four. That was lucky. I have killed them before with this thing. Today was not that day, sadly, Four though. Shots. As you can see, though, it's rubbish. You can't use the scope on it. And when you try to move it around, this is what happens. I'm barely moving the mouse at the moment. I'm just holding the left mouse button, and that is it. The uh, bipod mounted weapons in this game, of which this is one, seem to be possessed, is the only way I can describe it. You put your hand on it and it just starts doing strange things like this. I have no explanation. Four shots. It's just trespasser being trespasser. You may be looking at this game at this point and thinking to yourself, as I have many times before, that this is a really cool concept for a game. It's just a crying shame they never really managed to Coming implement it. Out of the southern base and the Atherton Causeway would bring visiting scientists north from the southern beach. 
And I would agree with you on that, basically. There has been, over many years since this game is released, a, a wow. few. They certainly were serious about their monorail. Again, she's taking this whole situation very well. I can do with saving the game here, really. But ever since this game was released, there's been a few ongoing projects by some very dedicated people to actually remake this game in various engines. I believe there was a project to remake it in Unity at one point, and another project that's ongoing to remake it in CryEngine. No word on when either of those are going to be released, as far as I'm aware. But best of luck to them. I hope they manage it one day. Ah. We seem to be on a giant seesaw type thing. Okay. Are there any dinos around? There might be, you know. Again, all of this down there we could explore. I'm pretty sure all we would find there is a big fat load of nothing accompanied by a few velociraptors. And unfortunately at the moment I don't actually have the ammunition to deal with that. Here again is another would-be melee weapon that simply is completely useless. Could try dropping things on the raptors, of course. I don't know if this crate will be enough to do any damage, but... Items with sufficient mass will do some damage on impact, both to us and to the dinosaurs. We're equal in that respect. What we're not equal in is falling damage. The dinosaurs in the game don't take any falling damage again because presumably they kept accidentally killing themselves. So the developers disabled it. But we do take falling damage, which is why I'm quite keen to not fall off this. Well, this would definitely kill him, I think, if it landed on his head. The question is, can I make that happen? Ah! Jackpot! I managed it. That saved some bullets. <laughs> And there's a gun just over there. I wouldn't mind having that. Another hunting Around rifle. 10. Excellent. Let's head back down this way and get back on top of the monorail. But this gun was worth grabbing. In fact, is there anything inside there? Nope, but you'll notice that the shed is in fact floating. as sheds are apparently wont to do in the Trespasser world. Now, can I get around this without falling into that ditch? Let's save and find out. Anything is possible with this game's physics. I'm looking around at the moment to find in the distance a mountain, and I think that's it over there. Possibly. Or maybe it's just a cloud. I'm really not sure. Anyway, there should be a large mountain around here somewhere. It's not this one. It's a different one. But the top of the mountain, which will be visible at certain points, is in fact the end of the game. From very early on in this game, you can actually see your final destination in the distance. Now, of course, it's not a truly open world by any stretch of the imagination, but it does have a definite sense of geography, which is something that I definitely count in this game's favour. You cheeky little... He moved at just the right time. I wonder if we can get him a second time. Or is he just going to hang around underneath the monorail? Is he smarter than his friend? That is the question. Oh. Damn it, I've lost it. Eight left. Ah! Another box raptor! Although he managed to shake himself free of that one, it got stuck on his tail. Seven. Six. Five. Four. That's another alternative way to aim like this, by the way. It's a little bit janky and weird, but then what about, what what in this game isn't? Right. Gotta 
making a lot of saves in this game. I think the... She just dropped that, and I have no idea why. I think this game, with the ATX mod that I have installed, actually does feature a quick save function. Unfortunately, without checking the readme, I can't remember what that button actually is, so I'm just going to keep dropping manual saves. Oh, crumbs. Speaking of manual saves. <laughs> Here we go. I'm surprised I nailed that on the first attempt, honestly, but okay. I heard another one of you. Who wants to die? Sneak past, just shimmy past here without falling off. Oof. Oof. Did you see the gymnastics his neck was doing there? Now, here's a fun thing. Originally, the, the Velociraptors were supposed to be able to jump. And I could have sworn, in the versions of the game that I originally played back in the day... They did jump, but in this version, they don't. Four shots. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Thanks, Anne. Never mind, let's just move on, shall we? Ooh, let's move on very quickly before they figure out how to get up here. Um, on the other hand... I don't think I can make that jump, and this entire concrete bit is moving slightly. Speaking of the falling damage I mentioned... Luckily, we're right to the end of the level now. Come on, you can do it, Ant. There we go. Mashing the jump button will accomplish an awful lot in this game. Oh, good. I didn't get another infinite loading screen this time. That's always nice. Ah, another helmet. About 20. Of dubious value. We do at least have one of these. The game was kind to us this time. 1981. I stumbled out of the helicopter already beginning to sweat and looked around at the lush forest. The wet leaves. The first task was genetic recovery. Acquiring Jurassic or Cretaceous amber, extracting preserved DNA and reassembling the complete sequences. Bringing it up the well, we called it. Fifteen, thirteen, twelve, ten. That was not a very economical use of bullets, I have to admit. Apologies. Three Cray XMPs move more data faster than any computer center in the Americas. gun up there I see I do believe it is in 11 months site B became the most powerful genetics facility in the world whatever there's Anne talking to the voices in her head again can't really criticize her though what am I doing right now after all I'd really like to be able to get up there and get that though I have to go around here instead or not. So said Anne really doesn't deal with slopes very well. And uh, ah, we've got company. Excellent.
Thank you very much. That's what I should have done the first time. I'll come back. Don't fall into the world. Into the void beneath. I really am never going to get that shotgun, am I? Eight left. Oh well. Ah, it's something at least. Six rounds. That falling off like that right there, that's a little bit of a hint for something we should do later on. You'll know when we see it. Ah, a good old fashioned invisible wall. Six left. Expecting an enemy around here somewhere. Hasn't shown himself yet, though. In a quiet, locked room, the extinction of species, the history of life on Earth is being methodically reversed. One thing I'll give this game it definitely has atmosphere. Pretty good sound design too, really. For 1998, anyway. That was a pretty nice shot, if I do say so myself. Anne's movement speed is frustratingly slow, in case you hadn't already noticed that. But what you may have also noticed is that it, it does change a little bit, depending on whether she's going up or down a slope. And she can build up a bit of speed over time the longer she runs. Sometimes, though, it's much faster to just bunny hop everywhere. I'll be doing a bit of bunny hopping later. The hunters landed on May 13th, 1997, deep in the island's southwest. Most of them had worked at my African parks for years. They never stood a chance. This gun's a pretty nice bit of kit, actually, this one here. It's got a fair few rounds in it. A fairly decent caliber. I think I've lined up the sights mostly correct, but... Uh... Fingers crossed. Let's drop another save. I hear you. Where are you? You notice as he's shot, he does briefly retreat. Depending on how aggressive they are, he might just leave completely under normal circumstances if he had enough room to go anywhere anyway. We're kind of boxed in here. 17. Eight left. I'm going to drop this for now because this is far more fun. It hasn't been used. It's an Uzi. And naturally, we'll be firing it this way. I spared no expense, permitted no failures. Aha, there's two of them. And you'll notice the one on the left looks a little bit different to the one on the right. He's a little tiny bit bigger, I think. And he has a very different 
pattern on his uh, on his skin. He's the second type of Velociraptor in the game, and he's a little bit more bulletproof than his friend over there. By 1983, we held 13 new patents. I was in high school then. About half a clip. Almost out. About 15. 15. Put him out of his misery. Get a closer look at him. There he is. This particular type of raptor was featured pretty heavily in the box art and in the screenshots for the game. I remember that much. This guy was all over the back of the box when I first picked it up in the store. About 15. There's another one. Hello there, friend. Well. Wow, oh, he's taken two in the face. That is impressive. Couldn't take three, though. November 1983. Test fertilization of an artificial ovum. My hands shook as I held the tiny eyedropper. One drop. Two drops. There. The genie was out of the bottle. Richard Attenborough really did a wonderful job for this game. It's a crying shame, honestly, that he didn't do the voice acting for a game that was a little bit more worthy of it. Now then. See that jeep up there? Took shape inside its egg, and I watched it on the ultrasound monitor. It looked like a ghost or a puff of smoke. Yeah. Eight left. He is bleeding profusely, isn't he? Now, there's a little something around here. I want to see if I can find it. It's one of the rocks. The raptor took shape inside its egg and I watched it on the ultrasound monitor. It looked like a ghost or a puff of smoke. You already said that, John. I can't seem to find it. And that annoys me. Eight shots. Five. No. There's a rock around here. And un underneath the rock, if you pick it up, there's a little message on it. From uh, Steven Spielberg. Says something along the lines of no need to thank us. Four bullets. Steven Spielberg was actually involved in the making of this game, and apparently this little bit here, with the Jeep falling on top of the Velociraptor, that was his idea. Steven Spielberg got a little bit involved in video games uh, back around this sort of period, actually. He was involved in this one, and he also was involved in Medal of Honor Allied Assault. You may have noticed in Medal of Honor Allied Assault if you've ever played that game, that its Omaha Beach level bears a striking resemblance to the Omaha Beach scene from Saving Private Ryan. It's, it's no coincidence Steven Spielberg was involved in the game's production. I began to have my first inkling of the seriousness of our work. How deep the well was. This was life from 65 or 100 million years before mankind. I've really done it. This is not a normal situation. Now, as she says that, you may have noticed at this point that for a Jurassic Park game, this this game so far seems to be missing a certain dinosaur. He's conspicuous by his absence. We're about to remedy that. Oh. 
Oh yeah. Hello. For 25 million years, we we grew seven of them. The seven rulers of the wild Oh, buddy, please leave me alone. Oh, boy. Yeah, fight the Velociraptor instead, please. His entrance is somewhat ruined by the fact that, much like the Velociraptors, he moves in a very strange and drunken sort of a fashion. But there he is. The T-Rex, and he's just absolutely murdered that raptor. I should get moving. <laughs> I am the only food left around here now. And despite what we've been led to believe, the T-Rex was not a scavenger at all. We clocked one at 50 kilometers an hour. I think he's leaving now. I do like the fact that you can hear his footfalls thudding away in the far distance there, just like in the film. It's a nice touch. Anyway, he's leaving us alone for now. Sometimes he can chase you all the way down this valley, and it's absolutely terrifying. You cannot kill the T-Rex by shooting it with guns. It cannot be done. He is pretty much indestructible. Now, that's not to say you can't kill a T-Rex in this game. There is one very specific way of doing it with one very specific weapon. One which we won't get our hands on for a long time. Oh, he's coming this way. I think he smelled this fella over here. He's gonna... Well, looks like he's after his main course, basically. I don't want to be a part of it. Neither do I want to be his dessert. So let's keep a nice, safe distance. Oh, yeah, he's hungry. And by hungry, of course, I mean I think his aggression is set to 100. <laughs> so he's gonna absolutely murder every living thing in sight. Luckily, as long as this is around, I think he'll ignore us, because we're much smaller. take this instead this little machine pistol thing here again this game this gun is rubbish and i hate it but it will have to do 10 shots in gen box of uh, of something here I, we can't open it so no idea what's in it but there it is 10 shots you can still hear the t-rex stomping away up there let's continue on this way into this ravine this horrifically textured ravine, I might add. Good grief. Hello. Oh, curses. Eight. Seven. All right. We want to be very economical with our ammo at this point. Very, very economical with our ammo. Economical with my use of the save games as well, actually. I should start overwriting them at this point. Trespasser likes to freeze up and get all kinds of weird if you have too many save games in the save game folder. I don't recommend it. Okay, that's wrapped to number two now. I believe there might be a third. 
I can hear him. He's going to come cresting over that little ridge there any second now. Right, right on cue. Thank you, sir. Three. And then we got him. Fun thing to note here, by the way, as well. This uh, dinosaur skull here, you see these teeth? I believe these can actually cause damage to the player if you jump on them just right. Unfortunately, the game's making a bit of a fool out of me right now, so never mind. But uh, I'm sure I've managed to accidentally damage myself by walking on top of those before. Skyrim, I can confirm, folks, is not the first game in history to feature random bones on the floor which can cause you damage by stepping on them. Oh yeah. These stretch textures are starting to look really awful now. <laughs> oh, and there's a there's a good old good old fashioned hole in the in the world there. That's nice. If we look at it from the correct angle, we, we can see through into the void beneath. Lovely. This is quite steep. We're not going to be able to get back up here once we go down. Not that we have any particular reason to. I've commented already on the sound design in this game, and again, I, I really like the fact that now we're in this area. All the sounds, and particularly the dinosaur noises, have this echo to them. textures. But that's 1998 for you. Battlezone is another game that was released in 1998. Another favourite of mine that a lot of people don't remember had very similar issues to this with its textures. It was just sort of a thing. Hello there, friends. There's three raptors here and the remains of a crashed helicopter. I don't know if we have enough bullets to deal with all of these velociraptors here. But we're going to have to find out next time, folks. To leave you on this almost literal cliffhanger here. I do apologise, but it's going to be done. We're just coming up on about an hour now, I think. So, ladies and gents... I hope you enjoyed watching this, and I hope you'll join me for more Trespasser in Part 3. Coming up very soon, hopefully. But until then, everybody, toodaloo, and uh, try not to become raptor food. <laughs>